Exploring our brain can get even more complicated than paying attention to our body. The anatomy and different parts of the brain, the neurology, which is essentially the wiring in our brains, and brain chemistry and hormones can all be super confusing. While all of it is incredibly important, we'll limit our focus to areas of the brain we can notice that will help us heal from trauma. Oddly enough, I'm going to start our brain conversation with a non-medical model that comes from dialectical behavior therapy. This model is called Wise Mind. Wise Mind looks at two primary states of mind we can be in. DBT is one of the most researched and effective therapies on the planet. As you can see from the illustration, on one side we have reason or reasonable mind. At its most extreme, Reason mind is strictly facts and logical information. You could almost think of it like a robot or a computer. There's no emotion involved in making decisions, which can make life pretty boring. On the opposite side is drama mind. As the name suggests, at its most extreme, drama mind is overwhelming emotion and, well, drama. It has little room for logic or reason and can often lead to impulsive and unhealthy behaviors. I usually ask my clients which side they think is the better side. Most trauma survivors, who are often at the mercy of drama mind, tend to believe that reason mind is the preferred state. The truth is, neither side is more positive or negative than the other. They both have really useful information for us. And neither side at its extreme is healthy. In DBT, the goal is to try and balance both states of mind to achieve wise mind. I refer to the wise mind model first because the skills DBT teaches are some of the best ways to stay regulated. Many of these modified DBT skills will be included in some of the awareness and regulation work that we'll do together. The wise mind model also helps us understand how both sides of our brain work. Each side is important in resolving trauma. Understanding this importance helps us to see what is effective in helping to heal trauma. Let's start with the right side of our brain, or drama mind. As you can see from the picture, the right side of the brain is the side that takes in the big picture on everything. The right side takes in everything all at once, kind of like a huge waterfall that pours all over us. It's where we store our autobiography and our senses like smell, taste, touch, and nonverbal information is all processed over on that side. Super important for our purposes is that the right side of the brain holds our trauma experiences. Many experts in the field of trauma have also concluded that our implicit memory, which is the one we aren't aware of servicing, lives over here as well. The right side also houses our negative and intense emotions. And possibly most importantly, there are no words on the right side of our brain. We don't really have a way to talk about the overwhelming experiences that live over there. I always get the impression that being in the right side of your brain at its, at its extreme is like being in that moment of terror where you want to scream. And then at that very moment, to try and let it go, someone clasps a hand over your mouth and it's like there's this stored up emotion and no way to let go of it or even breathe. This leaves trauma survivors with few options to express what's happening to them. This may be what leads to acting out physically against themselves, towards others, and their environment or some combination of the above. This leads us to the reminder, talk therapy alone is likely not going to be enough to heal the traumas we've faced. We have to find ways to bring both sides of our brain together at the same time to be able to release all of the sensations and ideas that come rushing in when we're exposed to reminders and triggers from our traumas. Fortunately, the left side of our brain comes to the rescue as long as we can find it. The left side of our brain has small details. So while the right side of your brain tells you that you are watching me in a video and in general, the left side tells you, I'm a male, I have a gray beard, mostly bald head, gray shirt on, and so on, down to as many details as you maybe want to take a look at. 
In trauma work, smaller details helps us to work through the trauma bit by bit without having to be completely overwhelmed by it. The left side of the brain also takes things one at a time in some kind of order. So where the right brain would jump from like one to 10, back to three, then to seven, then, oh wait, I forgot something at three. The left side of the brain can carefully go one, then two, then three, then four, and so on. So already we have things being broken up into smaller pieces and then having a sense of order that helps us deal with all that information as it comes in in smaller bits and pieces. The left side also makes sense of situation because it's where our logic lives. Logic helps us to think in steps and in processes to make conclusions. For instance, one plus one equals two. That's completed entirely in the left side of our brain. This might have something to do with why counting backwards from 10 when you're angry helps to calm or slow you down. The following is a really important idea when we're looking at our brain and our body in healing. The left side of our brain has language and words that helps us to sort through the small chunks and details using logic to make meaning of the things that we are experiencing. This combination of details, logic, step-by-step -step order, and words in combination with discharging the biology and the action tendencies in our bodies is what gives us a complete way to process through our trauma experiences. Another important job of the left brain is to save and store all the information we've learned throughout our lives. That's essentially where our explicit memory lives. All of our learning comes from being able to recall our explicit memory and then to add the new information together with this older information. One of the models for healing that we'll be looking at and working with is EMDR. One of the main principles behind EMDR is that our prior learned information gets literally cut off while we're having trauma experiences. Without that information as a reference, we don't have any way to make sense of what we're experiencing. With this in mind, one way of thinking about healing is that we create pathways in our brain to connect the trauma on the right side to the left side where our learned experiences live. Brain research actually lets us see these new paths being created while we grow new neurons and networks and then connect them to our past experiences. Since combining both sides of the brain seems to be critical to healing, we need to have ways that stimulate both sides of the brain as we're working through our traumas. Moving our eyes from one side to the other is one way that this happens. In EMDR, the EM actually stands for eye movement. Many therapists who practice EMDR believe eye movement is the best or the only method for stimulating both sides of your brain. My experience from literally hundreds of trauma processing sessions is any form of side-to-side -side movement is useful. This can be sounds or music moving from left to right ear, buzzers in your right to left hand, even tapping on your right to left shoulder. Any type of intentional right to left movement works. This basic information on our brain is hopefully enough to help you understand what we're trying to do in our trauma processing sessions. It should also help to remind us that healing is not a self-help effort. Trauma is too difficult to work through without someone helping you to stimulate both sides of your brain. We'll look at a few other parts of the brain and how they work together when we reach the processing section of our journey together. The memory section of our videos will talk about neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is kind of a fancy medical term that's used to describe how our brain is constantly changing throughout our entire lives. The idea of neuroplasticity is incredibly hopeful for trauma survivors. It explains how trauma work can physically grow and change our brains. And in review, while we can't really see what's happening in our brain, understanding how each side of the brain functions is critical. This understanding leads to using effective ways that includes both sides of our brain in healing trauma. We can also take comfort and hope that God is constantly at work, 
helping our brain to change and heal as we work with him. Okay, time to take a breather and really consider all of this information. Wise mind is a model that helps us use both states of mind to make decisions. Both states of mind in wise mind can be positive and negative, and they're also a good picture of each side of our brain. The right brain has big picture, all at once, autobiography, negative emotions, trauma, and no words. Our implicit memory probably lives here too. The left side of the brain breaks things into smaller details, puts them in order, has logic to reason through things, and has all the facts that we've learned in life. Also, it has words to help us express our thoughts and feelings. Our explicit memory likely lives on this side of our brain. Let's move on to exploring and identifying our emotions and ways that possibly we can begin to regulate them.